Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Prophet Leslie in the studio with me here today, and we're going to be talking about truth. (laughs) It seems so simple, but it is not that simple, I've discovered, and Leslie and I were just talking. Actually, finding the truth is one of the most difficult things in the world of Christianity. Now, before we talk about that, let me remind you that she's going to be speaking probably now through the end of the year. She's going to be speaking every Sunday morning from 930 to about 1030 at the Spirit of Prophecy Church. That's on the corner of Park and K in Plano. Just remember the word Park K. On the corner of Park and K right behind the Whataburger. May as well come from 930 to noon. Anyway, this week she's going to continue talking about Chris Lom. All right, what is Chris Lom? Chrislam worship is growing around the world. Many churches in America are combining Christianity and Islam. This DVD she's going to be making is talking about how Christianity and Islam actually say Allah is the same as Jehovah God. And they actually put the Quran and the Bibles in pews next to each other. Topics are how to recognize a Chrislam church, Chrislam and Christianity compared, how did Chrislam start, who is Isa in the Quran, what do faith-shared churches believe? Chrislam alive and well in America. What does Jehovah God say about Chrislam? And what should a biblical Christian church look like? Again, that's actually through the end of the year, but for the next two Sundays, the topic is Chrislam. She's making a whole series called Error in the Church, and there's going to be many topics in that, such as mysticism, New Age in the Christian Church, Kundalini Spirit, the New Reformation Church, or Kingdom Now Theology, and as I said, Chrislam this week. Then later, seeker-friendly, seeker-sensitive, emergent church, postmodernism, the G12 Vision Church, Tazi Worship, Tangible Kingdom Movement, False Christ, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church. Prophet Leslie, it sounds to me like there's a lot of errors in the church out there. A whole lot more than I thought there was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was just remarking this morning. And I said, you know, it seems like truth should be pretty simple to recognize, to find, and to follow. But I've discovered in my 21 years in Prophecy Club and being in ministry that it's not that easy. Have you discovered it's easy to fall and find truth? You know, you say the word truth and you think that like you just said that that's easy but you know in the scriptures in proverbs twenty three twenty three, it says buy the truth and sell it not so therefore it's an investment that we're supposed to do and the only way that you can really invest in truth is to find out what it is what it looks like and the, some of the ways to find out what truth is is to know what is not truth what's error true and then then you can compare that's one of the ways we have found out what truth is and what not okay let me give you an example of how not following the truth bit me really hard and i have to look up the year probably what 2002 or three someplace in there we had this guy in and i won't mention his name though i would love to because anytime i can speak out against this guy i do Uh, Now, all the other 154 guest speakers we've had at the Prophecy Club, not all of them are perfect. I mean, who's perfect? And so there's been errors among some of them, but I don't speak out against them, but this guy deserves it. We had him in. I have to tell you the story. When I was talking to him about bringing him in, and of course, just on the surface, if you listen to this guy, he sounds real good. And Leslie had no way of knowing who I was talking to. I got off the phone. Matter of fact, you tell the story. I might not even got off the phone, but you walked into my office and said, I I believe I just got off the phone. You walked in the office and said, who are you talking to? And I said, well, I was talking to some guy about possibly being a speaker. And you warned me off. Yes, I did. Oh, how I wished... I had listened. And our young daughter did, too. Matter of fact, she had a first dream about him before he even came to speak and was a warning. I had a dream. It was a warning. Actually, I had several dreams that were warning. And yet this man is was very charismatic. And that's sometimes what we have to watch out for, too. They can be very charismatic, sound very good. But again, you've got to watch their fruits and see what they do. Unfortunately, sometimes the people that follow these false Christ or false prophets, they don't always see 
who they really are. They're just seeing. Well, yeah, they think they're doing right. Yeah, they, well, they just see them in their charismatic way. They just see them in what seems to be a lot of healings and miracles and signs and wonders. But yet we had the, the opportunity to see behind the scenes on who they really were. And they become, you know, very controlling and. You know, and I'll just give this scripture too. It says that in Matthew twenty four twenty three, starting there through twenty six, it says, "Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show you great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect." So we can be deceived right there. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. And I'll add this emphasis, behold, if he tells you to go to, you know, to an island, believe it not. Behold, if he tells you to go to the Siberia, he's not. I mean, and this is what they're doing. These false prophets, these false Christ are saying they're, they've come in Elijah or they are the, they are Elijah. We, you know, there's a lot of them that'll say that, and unfortunately, even a couple that were speakers oh, for yeah. us. Here's a, another good example. I remember this was about 1999. We put this guy on tour, and it's so funny because back in those days, we were having meetings in about 40 cities a month, and we would see them when they would first talk to me. Oh, yes, Stan, uh, what, whatever you want. Yes, I'd love to be on tour. Yes, I'd love to go out and speak. And we would have them talk in about... Oh, let's see, what was it? About 15 cities a month that would be on the tour for two weeks, then off two weeks, and then on two weeks, off two weeks, and on two weeks. In other words, it took them three months to speak to 40 cities. Well, the first tour, they were very humble. The second tour, they would start getting a little full of themselves. And then the third tour, in other words, by the time they're now speaking in, oh, 25, 30, 35 cities, they're starting to think they walk on water. We saw quite a few of them, I have to say, unfortunately, that did get a real haughty, prideful, puffed up spirit. And so they started walking in great air. And, you know, yes, they were, many of them were already walking in some air, but this just added to it so much so that they, some of them believe that they had the Messiah complex, I would say. Yeah. You know, believing for sure that they are, as high as in the ranks of Messiah, for well, sure. this guy was saying, he got to say in some of the meetings, uh, and yes, we corrected him, I'll tell you about that in a second, but he started saying that he is one of the two witnesses, that he is one of the 24 elders, and he has the mantle of Moses. Okay, yes. you get that? One of the two witnesses. <laughs> and, now, and, it, and now, though, I think that from what I heard the latest is that he says he's Elijah. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Okay. So anyway, to let so we you know. we have a couple of those that say that. Uh, to, to let you know, and I know what you're, well, you're thinking. Well, Stan, I mean, can't you get just the good guys on tour? Okay, well, what about Jesus? Jesus gave the opportunity to 12 disciples, but one of those turned out to be a devil. God gives people an opportunity, and then either they do it right or they blow it. But he gives them the opportunity. I'm not saying that we're perfect here at the Prophecy Club, but I think that out of 154 speakers— Probably 150 of them were pretty good, but we're talking about the point is not trying to beat up on speakers this morning, but the point is try to say you got to seek after truth. So, anyway, I called this guy, and now you hear the nice guy on the radio, but Leslie will tell you if I have to, I can flat ream somebody out good, and that's exactly what I did. I reached through the phone long distance and I grabbed this guy by the neck and I shook him. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't say that sort of stuff. But I'm saying, brothers and sisters, you can't just sit back and think that the truth is coming to you easily. You have to run after it. You have to chase after it hard, and then you still may not catch it. Give them another example. Well, I remember a time that we were doing a crusade, and one of the quote-unquote prophets that were with us Actually, God really opened up my eyes about some things that were being done that just weren't setting well with me. And so, you know, it's one of those things sometimes you think it's just you. But so you have to really go and spend time with the Lord to find out if it's just you and your thinking or is it really maybe God trying to give you a warning. And 
fortunately, the next weekend that we were with him, he said he wasn't going to be traveling with us anymore. And I knew immediately because God had already really spoken to me and shown me some things that this man was saying and doing that were not of God. And this one particular prophet had spent time, I found out later, that he would spend time with the Kundalini spirit, the Kundalini people. spirit yeah. people, and so really he had picked up a Kundalini spirit, and so you know we just we had to just take some time and get that off of us. Oh, yeah. I didn't want I didn't want it to be in our ministry at all, and so it's so much so that you know now I've done a DVD about the Kundalini and spirit, and you need to get it. I'm telling them they need to get. Oh, it. they do need to get it because that is something that really is strong in many of the charismatic type churches is the kundalini spirit and it's operating very freely so much so that when someone wants to get free of it it's very very difficult it's very very hard for them for those of you that think oh your church is okay you don't have any of this and look i'm what we're trying to say this morning is being an error is really easy and the church you're going to the group you're in some of the things that you believe, especially if you listen to the radio and the TV a lot, to Christian ministries and things like that, you have probably stepped in it several times. You got that mud on you, and it may have splashed up in, in some pretty high places. What this series, Error in the Church, which is what valued it like $300, we're asking a $180 donation for it, is so valuable. But I can promise you, if you're listening to this voice, you probably have stepped in some error someplace in your Christian walk. This will help you to see the error and remove it. Well, I think part of the reason is is that as believers in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one true God, you know, we tend to think that just because we believe in him that we will totally be shielded from any kind of deception or any kind of false Christ or any kind of false prophet, and that's just not the way it is. That's That's not the truth. The only way that we can avoid deception is we've got to study and know the King James Bible. I mean, we've got to know it, you know, know the word. Really good. Yeah, really well. And so that we can see and and watch out for it. And even though, you know, through our ministry, you know, you know the word, especially Stan, even better than me. You know it. You've got it memorized. But yet the deception can still come in. You've got to continually to search for truth and constantly find it, constantly see if that's the truth or if that's error also you have to stop leaning on your own understanding i think too many times as christians we become rebellious in such a way that we just want to lean into our own understanding and not what christ is understanding what he says you also need to pray daily that the lord will guide you and keep you from evil and deceit also i add this to my prayer i pray for the gift of discernment to be activated in me every day because you know, discernment, you've got to know evil and you've got to know good. That's straight up the middle, whether it's evil, whether it's good, and then you've got to go on the good side. That's not so <laughs> and, easy. And, and sometimes that's not as comfortable or desirable as we want, but yet we, we have to go and have discernment for the good. Let me give you an example. Two or three years ago, we had a speaker come in, and he made a DVD, and afterwards we were going to have him prophesy to our church. And uh, he said, yeah, I can prophesy. And I thought, okay, bub, you better be able to do it because Leslie and I, uh, you know, that we. Yeah, by we, then we had already been around quite a yeah, few prophets. Yeah, that's right. Ones, we've so. been around. <laughs> we've done 60 crusades <laughs> and we've been around some real prophets. And this guy started prophesying and he was dying up there. He didn't have anything to say. And I just sat there and I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, uh, I don't have anything to say. And if you want me to step into this, then you got to give me the anointing. And there was no anointing for several minutes. And that was, matter of fact, this guy was stumbling all over. Finally, the anointing came. About that time, Leslie stepped up. She started prophesying that afternoon. We put him on the plane that afternoon, Sunday afternoon. That evening, Leslie and I talked, and I sent him an email. And basically, I said, we love you, brother, but you got to stop telling people you're a prophet And you have to stop prophesying in the name of the Lord because you demonstrated there that you are not hearing from God. Of course, he didn't like that. But the point is, is I'm saying, guys, when you go to these churches, when you listen to these other radio or view these other TV programs, you get these other DVDs, you especially have to be very vigilant in order to get the truth. 
Well, you know, the scriptures tell us that we're all to prophesy for one. Unfortunately, this man was even having a difficult time prophesying. And as prophets, people recognize that prophets are supposed to be able to, to prophesy. That's one of the signs. But just because you can prophesy does not make one a prophet. And unfortunately, many of the churches here in America or around the globe, the way that they say that they have a prophet in their church is because someone can prophesy. And then again, it puffs them up, many of them, thinking that they're prophets of God and just because they can prophesy, but yet they might be living in sin. They might be fornicating or an adulterous situation or something like that. That's not a prophet. You cannot be a prophet and do those kinds of things. Let me give you another example. Now, I realize you probably won't run across this from this side of the microphone, but you do run across it from that side of the microphone. I'll explain. Someone had sent me a name and said, hey, would you consider this guy being a speaker because he's a real prophet of God? So I called him, and uh, the lady answered the phone. Oh, well, uh, he'll be praying now for another two hours. I said, all right, fine, have him call me. So he finally called, and when he called, it was his assistant calling. Okay, well, uh, prophet so-and-so can speak with you now. Now, all of those are kind of little red flags with some of the things that we've seen and how the false prophets operate, and that's some of the things we've seen before. Anyway, so the guy comes to the phone. I said, okay, so tell me about your ministry and he began saying, well, you know, God is speaking to me here and there. And there. I said, okay, well, um, how long has God been speaking to you? Oh, probably 10 years. Well, tell me some of the things that he's spoken to you. Oh, well, he's told me that judgment's coming on America. I said, okay, well, uh, when did he speak that to you? Oh, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Well, uh, what, what did he say to you? Uh, well, you know, he just said that judgment's coming on America. Why, well, there's going to be trouble coming all over here and there. And I said, all right, well, specifically, what date did he speak that to you? Oh, I didn't write it down. I said, well, how did he speak that to you? Did he speak that to you in a dream? Was this an angel visit? Is this a vision? How did he say, oh, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And I kept asking him questions, and I would just ask him a question, then I would just talk. I mean, I would just listen, just let the guy talk. So finally, after about 45 minutes of just letting him talk and just listening carefully, I said, okay, well, Here's my analysis. I said, now, you have to understand, I think I've earned the right to give you this analysis. I said, because for 13 years before I got in the ministry, I used to be a public speaking instructor. I have literally heard thousands and thousands of two-minute talks. And I can tell you the difference between when someone is telling a lie or versus when they're telling the truth. Then, as far as the ministry, for the last 21 years, I've done a radio program, and we've invited 154 speakers in. They've made a total of 305 DVDs or VHS tapes. And I said, I, in addition to that, my wife and I has also conducted about 60 crusades. We've had as many as 800 people at the crusade. And these crusades are 9 to noon, 2 to 5, 7 to 10 for three days in a row. We have guest prophets in. And I said, so I have worked with a lot of prophets. One of the things we also used to do is set up a room, and everybody that came to the crusade got a personal prophecy. They went into the room, sat down across the table from a total stranger, and they turned on the recorder, and they prophesied to them. And I said, we didn't get any complaints. Instead, people walked out blowing their nose, wiping their eyes. I said, so I think I've earned the right to be able to say when it's God and when it's not God. And I said, so I'd like to give you my analysis. He said, okay. I said, I think you are a flim-flam man. He said, what? I said, you heard me. I said, you are not hearing from God. You are lying to the people. You're controlling the people. You're only doing this for donations. You're not really hearing from God. You're building yourself a little harem. You're building yourself a harem of people that will give to you and support you. This is not about Jesus. This is not about God. This is about you. He said, you're kidding. I said, do I sound like I'm kidding? I said, I'm not kidding. What you need to do is stop, resign, repent, get out of the ministry, throw yourself on your face before God and ask him to forgive you. He said, you're kidding. I said, no, I'm not kidding. Have a nice day and hung up. 60 seconds later, the phone rang. We picked it up, hung up again. 
Now, tell them what happened a couple of weeks later, Leslie. Well, apparently this was right before the 1st of August when you had spoken with him because apparently right after that, this so-called prophet told his church that they had to be in prayer every morning. They had to be at the church by 5 a.m. every morning and and pray till he says that they were done. And so the reason I can say that this is what happened is that I know, several weeks after you talked with him, we got a phone call, and you were not here, so I took the phone call, and it was it was a lady. She apparently was on the other end of the conversation, the phone, when you were talking to this, as you call him, the flim flam man, because he was too anointed to touch the phone. So he had to have somebody pick up the phone and be on the phone, push the button for speaker or whatever, however they were doing it. So she heard the whole conversation. Before that, she says, I was questioning some things that were going on. She says he was wearing us out. And that's one of the things that we have seen in with a false prophet right. is that they wear the people down they physically so much that they can't see spiritually what's the truth and what's going on. They control them. They tell them Jesus appears to them and they're to have sex with them. And Jesus appeared to me and you're supposed to give me your car, which this is what happened. She says, I saw him do that, saying to this one couple that they had a Mercedes and said that Jesus appeared to him and says that they were supposed to donate or give him their Mercedes because that was supposed to be the prophet's car. And so they had no car after that. And so she says, my eyes were starting to be open, but I, I still was questioning myself. I kept thinking it was just me. And she said, I was on the other end of the conversation and I heard Pastor Stan say what he said to this man. And she says, I was floored. But she says, I'm telling you, it freed me because all of a sudden I could see, I could see the truth. And this other woman that was in there also saw it we got out she says but before we got out there was several weeks we went every day in prayer and she said now you would think maybe 20 minutes you know they're going to be there at five o'clock in the morning 20 minutes 30 minutes and she says and we have families you know we have children we're dragging them out and bringing them in and and she says husbands were losing jobs women were losing jobs because she says it would go maybe sometimes till two o'clock in the afternoon before he would let us go and so we were and this was to happen every day in the month of August. And so she said, I think what happened is it just made him want to control us even more because he he was being found out. And she says, I'm really, really concerned about, you know, some of the ones that are still in that church. And she went on to say, you know, how she got out and everything. But, you know, this is one of the things that we have seen. We saw that with one of the so-called prophets that worked with us and how his crew, he did, he wore them out so much. And They'd say that he was in prayer while they were out, you know, just staying awake. He wouldn't let them sleep. And, you know, maybe they weren't even doing anything, but he just wouldn't let them sleep. They said he had to, they had to pray all night, and then they had to do crusade all day. And I said, he's not in there <laughs> praying. He's in there sleeping. I guarantee you he's sleeping so he can have the strength to go on and thinking that he's all mighty and powerful and but yet you know he they were controlling the people so much that they can't even think for themselves the thing we want to say in this broadcast brothers and sisters is finding the truth is not easy and if you're not running after it if you're not seeking it if you're not like climbing a mountain trying to get to the top being truth is at the top if you're not really wrestling to get and find and know the truth then what you are probably in error. Uh, oh, Stan, you, you can't be t serious. Oh, yeah, I'm real serious. Let me just say this. If you are, what I will say, happy in your, your Christian walk, happy in your church, happy in your life, if everything seems to be going well, then I'm going to say you are probably not in truth. Henry Groover used to say, if something is not going wrong in our ministry, we wonder what's wrong. In other words, if you're seeking truth, then you're constantly running from the devil, you're running to the Lord, and there is a battle. There is a battle, and if you're not fighting and winning that battle, then you're by default losing it. I just want to encourage every listener out there that this is not to make you stay away from going to church. Right. If anything, I want you to find a church yes. that is biblical. And you'll have to search. You will have to search in your own city, your own community, and find that church that is a biblical-based 
Christian church because we are to fellowship one with another. You might say, well, there's just a bunch of hypocrites. Well, you know, yes, there is, but so are you. You're a hypocrite if you do or you don't. That's not an excuse. And so I don't want this talk to keep you and shy you away from finding a church home because it is biblical that we are to fellowship one with another, especially as the day approaches of the end. Well, brothers and sisters, we've run out of time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. And don't forget to come and hear Leslie each Sunday. God bless. Brothers and sisters, God wants us to help his side win the battle for souls. The Prophecy Club is on the tip of God's spear. Join the battle and prayerfully consider supporting the Prophecy Club with your gifts of support. We would not be here without your prayers and generous financial support. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Prophet Leslie will be speaking each Sunday morning through the end of December, making a 10-DVD set called Error in the Church. This will help you to recognize a biblically-based church and avoid those with errors in doctrine, committing abomination, heresy, apostasy, and blasphemy. Many churches are like a poison M&M. They look good, taste good, but they'll kill you spiritually. Like Chronicles 20.20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. And the topics are mysticism, new age of the Christian church, the Kundalini spirit warning by Andrew Strom of Australia, new reformation church or kingdom now theology church, Chris Lobb, seeker friendly, seeker sensitive church, the emergent church, postmodernism, the G12 vision church, Tazi worship church, tangible kingdom movement church, Viserian Siberian Jesus church, Hyper Grace Movement, Yoga in the Church, 12 topics, 10 DVDs valued at $300, and you can place your order for them now for just a gift of $180. She'll be speaking 9.30 to 10.30 each Sunday through the end of December at the Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano. That's on the corner of Park and K in Plano. No charge, of course. See you there. Today, we're making three DVDs available for a gift of just $25. The first one by Augusto Perez, End of Times. Topics are the Great Shaking, the Coming Famine, the Glory Cloud, the Coming Attack on the United States, the Great Darkness, the Super Devaluation of the dollar, the double portion outpouring, and how God will protect his own. Then, the coming pole shift by Lloyd Carpenter. The Bible says that earthquakes will increase and the earth will turn upside down. Lloyd has studied the coming pole shift for over 20 years, and he says it is coming. And the topics are the earth's wobble, earthquakes, tsunamis, weather pattern changes, tornadoes, hurricanes, mudslides, floods, and droughts, volcanoes, plate tectonics, seafloor spreading, hot spots, melting ice in the ring of fire, subduction zones, the scientific rationale for a pole shift, the Pacific Ocean and plate tectonics. Have earthquakes dramatically increased in the last 10 years? How does the Earth's rotation affect earthquakes? And John Moore in Signs in the Sun, Moon and the Stars gives you a fascinating presentation using biblical, archaeological, scientific, and privileged government information to show you what is beginning to cause these signs in the sun, moon, and the stars. John proves the signs have already begun and will grow in intensity. He was an intelligence analyst for the U.S. Army and now a homicide detective and radio host. He has been investigating earth changes since 2000 and has some startling discoveries. John has proof there is a mystery planet heading toward our solar system, which is causing ice caps to melt, stopping the Gulf Stream, causing tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, extremely hot and cold weather, He says the governments of the world know about it and they're preparing underground survival facilities. Included in this presentation is a classified map showing safe locations. It's the catastrophes in Bible prophecy gift offer. End of times, Augusto Perez. Coming pole shift, Lloyd Carpenter. Signs in the sun, moon, and stars, John Moore. Valued at $90.00 all available for a gift of just $25. Call 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. That's catastrophes in Bible prophecy gift offer. End of times, coming pole shift, signs in the sun, moon, and stars. All for a gift of $25. In 1980, an angel came to Dimitri Dudeman and told him that it is written in the Bible and that America will be defeated in one hour by Russia. 
I just made a brand new DVD covering all of the secular real life proof that Russia really is preparing to do exactly that. Topics are arise, devour much flesh, Russia and prophecy, Russia now rich and strong, Russia's numerous military expansions, Ukraine and how it is making the bear angry. Russia is warning the U.S., but we're not listening. Russia is building their military, modernizing submarines, aircraft, missiles, and their army while the U.S. is downsizing and filled with traitors and weaknesses. Two and a half hours, gift of $30, go to prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. That's The Russian Bear Rises at prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. Order today.